Salutations, bienvenue, welcome. We are all here because Schitt's Creek Council has decided to raise the town children's abysmal literacy skills with some free vocabulary lessons. You're all very lucky to have a trained thespian as your coach. I did suggest that perhaps the primary school teacher would be suited to teaching, but apparently she doesn't wish to do her job in her spare time, so here we are. I hope this will be an enlightening and heuristic experience. We are going to start with three of my favourite words. Impulsive, capricious and melodramatic. Impulsive and capricious describe a person who follows their whims at will, while melodramatic describes a person who is exaggeratedly emotional. To use these words in a sentence, what you did was impulsive, capricious and melodramatic, but it was also wrong. The next word is cortege. No, Danny, it's not another word for a zucchini. A cortege is a procession of people. One day you will all have a cortege of mourners, I'm sure. The next one is a word that may seem familiar to all of you, but is in fact hiding a secret. Fold, in the sense of fold in the cheese, means to carefully combine two substances through lifting and turning a spoon. Our next word is bumbleate, meaning buzz. For instance, right now the room is bumbleating with anticipation. Now, if I were to say, we have a glut of unanimous ideas at council, could anyone tell me what that means? No? Well, a glut is an oversupply, and unanimous means united in stupidity. Next word is pettifog, meaning to quibble. For instance, you could say, Alexis, now is not the time for pettifogging.
Now, when someone is a petty fogging, it can be quite a bedeviling experience. Bedevil meaning to torment or harass. For instance, I'm positively bedeviled by these lessons and all the chin wagging I must do. The next word is spanandry, or a scarcity of males. For instance, the pickings are slim in this rural spanandry. Next we come to bolus, meaning one mass of a substance. For instance, this is what my life has come to, David, killing a man over a complimentary bolus. Now this next word describes me as your teacher. Approachable, meaning someone who is non-threatening and easy to talk to. In a sentence, I am approachable. And next we have the word disgruntled, meaning irritated or put out. For instance, David, stop acting like a disgruntled pelican. Now let's move on to the word lethario, meaning a playboy who behaves recklessly and selfishly with women. For instance, a ponytailed lothario cruising down the Monte Carlo coast. Our next word are related is patrician, meaning aristocratic. For, for instance, a humble backstory will disabuse this man of any notion what to patrician. Now for doggery, a word meaning clothing. For instance, Kylie's toggery is the perfect tribute to the common woman. And Samuel at the back there. Samuel is bored, lethargic and practically dripping with ennui. Lethargic meaning lazy and sluggish. And ennui being a state of complete Boredom. 
Oh, Lucky's fallen asleep. Now, pablum. Pablum is a soft cereal for peppers and also refers to bland, dried, or insipid material. In a sentence, I will not be fed your pacifying pablum like some kind of soft headed infant. That's it for today, but there's a passage I would like you to read so we can analyze the vocabulary in it next week. In the lair of a picturesque ridge lies a small, unpretentious winery, one that pampers its fruit like its own babies. Hi, I'm Moira Rose, and if you like fruit wine as much as I do, then you'll appreciate the craftsmanship and quality of a local vintner who brings the musk melon goodness to his oak chardonnay and the dazzling peach crab apple to his riesling rioja. Come taste the difference good fruit can make in your wine. You'll remember the experience and you'll remember the name, Herb Erdlinger. See you next week. Ciao.